Welcome to the Leading Movement Health Series. I'm your host, Phil Wagner, founder and CEO of Sparta Science. And here we host discussions with invited guests who have a vast experience at the intersection of leadership and health. And we talk about health a lot of times, we talk about movement health, which is the ability to move without pain or fear. But how does this relate to leadership? A lot of times in health, we have the data and sometimes we have the insights, but we still see problems on the rise directly with things like musculoskeletal injuries, but also indirectly with things like mental health. And so when it comes to innovation and solving problems, it's not always about what's new. How do we find something that's just invented? It's more about adoption and leadership holds the key to better adoption. So in this series, we're seeking out these leaders that, you know, in some cases, many of you may not be aware of. They're not on social media every hour. You know, they're really in the trenches, leading their people, leading organizations. And today I'm really excited. We have Chief Jamie Newman, the Command Chief Master Sergeant at Air Force Life Cycle Management Center. And really, he's the senior enlisted leader for combat readiness, health, and the effective utilization of people. You know, another way to say it, he's basically the quality of life for 26,000 people working across 77 <laughs> locations. You know, it's a, it's a very large organization. But he was also a U.S. Army Ranger instructor, so he's operated at many different levels uh, within the military. And why I'm excited about today is leadership often revolves around ensuring your team has the right tools for success to do their job. Another way to say that in a much condensed way is logistics. And military is known for this, you know, ever since the Napoleon days to, to modern day. You know, how do you move? How do you house? How do you supply people and equipment? And the Air Force Lifecycle Management, their goal is to improve acquisition and support of equipment, but that equipment also includes people. So I want to really welcome, and I'm excited to have Chief Newman here today with us. Thank you for joining. Hey, thank you, Dr. Wagner. I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of time, and I'll, you know, I'll try to keep it brief. My career, I'm almost at 29 years coming up, and I think I've had a few surgeries and ailments along the way, but I think, you know, knowing what works for you in the readiness realm and logistics, being able to deliver those things in a timely fashion to the warfighter is a huge piece of what we do every day. And I look forward to talking to you more about that. Yeah. And I think that that gives you a certain empathy, right? <laughs> you know, for, for those you're leading that you've gone through, you know, your own challenges, you know, with, with movement injuries and surgeries and usually pain as a, as a friend that comes a long way with all those, you know, so, you know, talk a little bit about why health is kind of so important to, you know, the military, in your case, the life cycle management, you know, center and how critical that is. Absolutely. Um, my boss, General Morris, huge proponent of fitness, big runner, and just overall holistic wellness, right? Mind, body, spirit, you know, the things that you read, help you lead, and the things that you do that help you function fitness wise also contribute to your overall health which contributes to your mental well-being and the ways that you handle stress. And so there's an impact whether you do it or you don't do it. And I'll try to explain that. And so when you don't do it, there's a negative impact. Your body can kind of feel sluggish. You may not feel as aware as you normally are in meetings or more attentive. When you get home in the afternoon after 5 p.m., you may fall asleep on the couch, even though you're sitting there with your wife, you're not really doing anything you're just physically exhausted because you just don't have the energy to move. And so to combat that, you've really got to have good routines. And if you don't have them now, I recommend you probably start small, even if it's just five minutes a day. And then the next week, do six minutes a day. And then the next week and so on from there, just kind of add a little bit to your, your daily routine because sometimes life happens and we get busy. And before you know it, you're not physically fit anymore and you're struggling to get to work every day and your wellness starts to get impacted and you start to notice you get a little more sick and you're more frequently going to the hospital and then, oh man, my neck hurts. What happened there? And so you start to have surgeries, you know, like I've had and you realize, man, maybe some of that could have been on me. Maybe I should have worked out a little bit more in these areas or been a little bit more balanced with my workout because um, sometimes that can impact a lot of things too. But uh, on the other side of that coin, doing those things helps you be more resilient, helps you work those long hours and helps you kind of combat those illnesses that might uh, might otherwise get you if you, you weren't working out. 
Yeah, I, I love to hear that that term routines in there, right? You know, so much yeah. is, you know, life is so much an accumulation of your habits, right? Um, yep. What are some key habits, you know, you or you feel the Air Force has kind of started to employ, you know, in place to keep, you know, airmen, you know, healthy and functioning at a higher level? Yeah, I, I love the question. So accountability, and that, that sounds odd, right? Like an accountability, how is that a habit? I think the Air Force is starting to recognize that we have to hold ourselves accountable a little bit. And what I mean by that is for self-care. You, you have to prioritize self-care. You know, there's, there's got to be a moment in the day where you get that reading done that you've always said you want to do, right? You've got 50 books on yourself, but you've only read two. And you, you've got a list that you need to get through. Or, you, you know, you told your spouse, hey, I'm going to go for a run tomorrow, but you never did it. And so accountability of self-care and prioritizing your happiness and wellness so you can be better for your family and for the job because there are going to be demands at some point, right? We just came off the tail end of uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom and and other conflicts and different contingencies. And I would argue um, we did pretty successful there because of our ability to sustain readiness because of our wellness and our ability to uh, balance that work and life. I think when I came in in the 90s, uh, everybody just worked. You never saw anybody work out. And uh, the converse of that now is you see more and more people filling the streets of the base every morning around 6 a.m. Or, you know, some folks like to run in the afternoon, so 5 p.m. And I love seeing it. I, when I first uh, reintegrated from my Army assignment as a Ranger instructor, I called it the Sea of Blue. I kind of had departed the Air Force, so to speak, to go do some other things. And when I came back, I noticed a dramatic difference in the amount of people in the gyms running on the streets and really getting after that self-care. And so accountability and self-care, I think, is one of the things that we're, we're shifting the tides in. You'll see electronic devices being used more and a ring device and a watch device that monitors sleep, activity, and overall well-being. And you can program in hydration and exercises that you do that may not automatically get detected, like running or biking, I think sometimes gets automatically detected. So. Yeah. So in a way it's those, you know, that self-awareness, which, you know, the hope is right. That, that breeds, you know, accountability, right. Because, you know, you're, you're, you're aware of what you're doing in a more objective, um, immediate fashion, if you will. That's right. And I think it sets an example too, because when you're doing it, your people are doing it and it might shock you how close your children are paying attention to you. I never noticed it before, but my kids started like working out at around 16 or 17. I'm like, you want to go for a run? That seems odd to me um, for a teenager. But they do. They, they often model and act on the things that they see. And so you're, you're not only impacting yourself, but your family and also your subordinates and your teammates that you work with every day. So it's a great way to go about it. Right. Yeah, I love that concept of, of self-care and, you know, really taking care of yourself first. Right. Because I think it's hard for leaders. Right. You, know, you feel like you're being selfish. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you do that, but yeah, you know, I always joke with my wife, you know, secure your oxygen first between, before those around you, right. <laughs> Taking care of herself before she's helping all the kids, because, you know, I think back to your earlier points, it's easy to get run down. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Start traveling across time zones, different engagements, you know, breakfast to bedtime type of work uh, can really take its toll on you. And you've got to make time for yourself, not just to do fitness, but to also rest mm. and, and not be engaged and maybe just sit quietly for an hour, not on a phone, not on a computer and just relax and let your mind kind of regather its thoughts. It might uh, amaze you at what that could do for just your well-being, uh, not being connected to an electronic device for a little bit. It's uh, it's pretty, pretty healing in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I, I really, really <laughs> like how you keep relating, you know, health, physical fitness back to the, the mental, emotional component, right? Because they are so connected. You know, are there things you see, you know, coming up in the future that, you know, you, the Air Force are kind of focusing on either strategically or tactically of like, here's where we we want to continue to improve the health of the airmen? Absolutely. And so I think the health and wellness, different centers across the installations have really started to revamp how they support airmen and families with, um, I think it's called a flow pod where you can get in there. And it's completely silent and you float in water and there's some mental stability and other things that goes on while you're inside there. There's ice baths, there's hot 
but like just uh, numerous things are starting to come online. And I think some of it was really adopted from the special operations community and how they care for their operators. And that is now making its way into the mainstream of the military. And in the Air Force, you know, just to continue on bragging about the Air Force a little bit, uh, the use of wearables and starting to really pay attention to what you're doing. And it's just for some reason, when you all of a sudden start to account for yourself in a lot of different ways, sleep, food, hydration and exercise, for some reason, you you do a little bit more of each and you do a better job of each because now you're monitoring it. And it was kind of uh, fascinating to me to see how all of a sudden we put attention on something, how it started to become important. Hmm. and now we're measuring it, so it's even more important. I love the Air Force's approach to some of the fitness programs and how they've opened up like the shuttle run and the different push-ups and the different sit-ups and some of the other categories to allow airmen to branch out and not just have to do the push-up, crunch, and and one-and-a-half-mile run or walk. There's some other components, and they've separated the body comp, so you do that during your birth month, and it's not necessarily a detrimental part of this fitness assessment anymore, which I thought was a great initiative by the uh, Department of the Air Force and the team. And so really the evolution, I, I think we're seeing an evolution now. And I know the Space Force is trying some things with wearables and monitoring fitness and, and thinking about how they're going to integrate that into their fitness testing program. I don't know a lot about that, so I won't comment too much on it, but I, that's kind of some of the rumblings I had heard. And it sounds super intriguing to me. And I'm curious how that would look in a day-to-day basis, uh, how you would monitor somebody and, and calculate that into a fitness kind of equation that deems them ready to be a, a guardian or mm-hmm. uh, or ready to go do their job. So, yeah, lots of goodness happening, and it's it makes me proud to see that. You know, when I was a young airman, uh, you pretty much did push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and that was kind of it. If you worked out, you did that pretty much on your own time. And if after working a 12-hour shift, uh, you were pretty tired. So you either did it normally in the morning or you just didn't do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and it's great. I think the Air Force has, has really led the way that, you know, starting to ease off the the fitness tests and focus more on the day-to-day process, right, that leads mm-hmm. up to the fitness test, right? Because if you take care of the process, right, the results will happen, right? And and I think that's such a, you know, a powerful, you know, way that it's approached that. And, and certainly devices and technology can help, you know, give that feedback on those daily processes, right? Yeah, Absolutely. I'm, I'm loving the direction, you know, I, I almost feel sorry for folks that work directly for me because I bring a kettlebell into my office and at least one day a week, the goal of doing a however many of whatever exercise for the entire day and you kind of put your number on the board. So let's say if it's push-ups and the day is Wednesday, that we're going to knock that out. Just whenever you can do them to whatever capacity and at the end of the day, you total up your number and just another way to kind of incentivize and have a little bit of fun with fitness and, uh, you know, just make a game of it. Yeah. And builds cohesiveness too, right? I think that's a a big value around activity is, you know, hopefully it it brings us closer as human beings. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I agree. And and they normally get a good laugh at it because you're sweating together, right? Nobody's worried about who's doing more or less. It's a, it's a great environment to just kind of be yourself and, and not worry about who's judging how many pushups you do and all that kind of stuff. You know, we, we don't need to do that. It's just about getting after it and having fun. That's great. Absolutely. You know, and, and I know you're, we, we always keep these, you know, interviews, you know, fairly short because, you know, you got to get back to leading, you know, so I, I, I like to kind of summarize at least my take home, you know, from what I'm learning from you. And the first one is, you know, how much, you know, the clear thing is how well fitness helps manage stress, right? You talked about, you know, what you don't do, right? And fitness has so many um, indirect consequences on your daily life cognitively, not yeah. just the physical piece. And, and I think the second piece is this accountability of self-care, Right. You know, how do we empower people to take ownership of their own health? And I think the last piece, I mean, you know, talk about measurement and how it creates awareness. I'm reminded of this quote by Peter Drucker, what gets measured gets managed. Yeah. Right. And so like this measurement has really allowed, you know, the Air Force to create a lot better awareness, which feeds that accountability and that self-care. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, as you as you work through it. it People can overdo it. So you've got to be cautious and everyone definitely needs to talk to their medical doctor before they go diving headfirst into a CrossFit functional fitness program that, you know, the next day they're just struggling to get out of bed because they're so sore. Mm. Um, there's a way to do it. And it's, it's typically, you know, start small. 
work, work your way up into a better routine, I would say first. And then second, worry about your output. And then third, the rest of it kind of works itself out because now that your routine is set, you're taking better care of yourself. The stress starts to fall away. You feel a little bit better. And within a couple of months, you know, you've inspired others to do the same. And it's, it's just a wonderful thing when it works out that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, you mentioned the, you know, sometimes the danger of measurement, right. Is if you try to get to the same level as someone else that yeah. you, know, you haven't worked into yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't make somebody do a 25 mile run who hasn't ran three miles first. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that's a, that's a tough, tough gap to fill. Uh, no doubt about it. Well, Chief Newman, this has been great. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Absolutely. Doctor, I appreciate the opportunity and I look forward to talking to you more about any and all of these kinds of things. As I start to uh, really, now that I'm really healed from my surgery and my neck, um, I've noticed just uh, tremendous gains back in my fitness and health and stress levels are down and my happy, my happy button is happy, right? My family's happy. So that's my happy button. If they're happy, I'm happy. And uh, things just seem to be a little bit better in that state of mind. So appreciate the opportunity. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir.